In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can save a lot of money by servicing your own vehicle when you see the check engine light come on. Normally, most people would bring their vehicle to the auto repair shop when this light comes on, but the only problem is there are a lot of dishonest repair shops out there, and something that may only cost you $30 or $40 to fix could end up costing you hundreds of dollars. So in this video, I'm going to show you what you need to purchase and it's very inexpensive, in order to be able to scan your computer when the light comes on. If you use the right code scanner, not only will it supply the codes, but it will tell you exactly what the code means so you know what to replace. Let's get started. In order to troubleshoot your vehicle, you're going to need a code reader. The one that I use is this one right here. It says Centec. Pull this out. It's an OBD2 EOBD. Now this one is designed to check all codes on the engine. And the good thing about this unit, it'll also tell you exactly what each code means. And there's a lot of other features as well. It has an LCD screen. And I will have a link posted in the video description area for the less expensive code reader, which does not tell you what the problem is. It just supplies the code. You would have to look it up yourself or the more advanced model like you see here. I'll also be sure to include coupon codes to save you money and your purchase will also be supporting my channel. Now let me just push this to the side. Now this particular model right here also includes a USB cable as well as a DVD so you can connect this up to your computer right over here using the software that's included. This connector right here plugs in underneath your dashboard and this plugs into the top of the unit. Let me go in the vehicle, connect it up and show you how it works. You're going to plug in the scanner underneath your dash, look underneath right over here until you see the connector that I show you right here. Once the key switch is in the on position, take a look at the screen. Over here, OBD2, click on OK, linking to the vehicle. This also has a live test, which is very cool. When the engine is running, it will give you all the values of the sensors that you could look at, as well as the RPM, which I'll show you in a minute. That means something was found right there. All right, codes found zero. I have data that I think was stored. I don't want to lose it. So let's push OK. Read codes, pending codes. Let's go through all the makes. It said a code was found, which is specific. There it is. All right. So my check engine light goes on and off while driving, and that's a common symptom of a faulty oxygen sensor. There are four on this vehicle, two on bank one, one side of the engine, and two on bank two. Here it says bank one, sensor one, is faulty. That's the code number. So let me push this here, and it's code P1166. Once again, bank one, sensor one. And that's all the codes, so let's hit escape. Well, let's do this. Let's do live data. Let me turn the engine on. All right, so let's go to live data. It's going, it's linking up with the computer. Watch how cool this is. View data. Complete. All right, this is monitoring in real time all the different parts of the engine, all the different sensors. You'll see the values changing. Let me give it a little bit of gas and you'll see. That just went up. See them all changing the values? All right, so let's go down here for a second. Fuel system. 
Spark Advance. Right here, I'll give it gas, it'll change. See? And there's my RPM. It's going to go back to 750, I think, all right? Miles per hour. If we were actually driving on the road, you would see that displayed as well. This looks like possibly engine coolant temperature. I can't see from the angle I'm at. That's the MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor, which is located in the air intake hose. Let's go lower. All right. See the question mark? That's indicating there's an issue with the oxygen sensor, and look what it is. O2, bank 1, sensor 1. Now, this is the voltage that's given off by the oxygen sensor. And based on the level of oxygen in the exhaust gas, that value is going to be low or high. You can see it changing. There's O2 sensor, bank 1, sensor 2. Over here's the other one. Very low value. Let's scroll down here. And you'll see the other one, bank 2. So I know it's the oxygen sensor, so now I can replace it. It also told me exactly which one it is. If you want to troubleshoot your transmission, then you can read codes, stored, hit escape. Let's see if there's any pending ones. Escape. Super, super useful tool. Over here is a new oxygen sensor that I'm going to be installing. And the way these work, they sense the level of oxygen in the exhaust gas. And it's very, very important because what that does, it tells the computer the best ratio for the fuel and air mixture for the engine. You don't want your engine running too rich, nor do you want it running too lean. And in the live data, which you just saw, it shows the output voltage. These do get dirty over time. Carbon gets inside here, clogs it up, not allowing it to sniff that exhaust gas anymore. Because you can purchase these fairly inexpensively, there's no reason to attempt to clean them. Just toss them out, swap it, and you should be good to go. Once you're done installing the oxygen sensor, you can go on here, and you would go erase codes right there. Hit OK, clear it, drive the car for a day, go back and make sure you don't see any new codes or pending codes. Okay, let me take my oxygen sensor out of the vehicle and swap it out. On this particular engine, you have two oxygen sensors located in front, and you have two oxygen sensors located between the engine and the firewall. That side of the engine is known as bank one, and this side is known as bank two. Now bank two, which I'll show you in a minute, there's a sensor very close to the top. That is known as bank two sensor one. And just below that, on the opposite side, is Bank 2 Sensor 2. The one at the bottom is known as Downstream, and the one at the top is known as Upstream. The same applies for the other side of the engine. The codes that were given to me on the scanner indicated that Bank 1 needed to be replaced. So let me show you what it looks like here. Sensor 1, Bank 2. Sensor 2, Bank 2. In this image here, looking down by the firewall, you can see Bank 1's oxygen sensors, the upper and the lower, number 1 and number 2. Okay, this is the faulty one that was removed from the exhaust manifold. And this was the tool that I used. It's an oxygen sensor socket, and I believe it's around 7 eighths of an inch. Yep, 7 eighths. Slide it over the wire like that and it allows this wire to come out of the socket so you can unscrew the sensor. So it's very important that this is working properly especially for good gas mileage and emissions. Inside this end over here is a ceramic piece along with very small amounts of platinum and that's what's used to sense the levels of oxygen. The oxygen sensor is probably the most common cause of why the check engine light goes on, especially while driving when you see the light go on and off, on and off. The next two most common causes of why the check engine light goes on 
would be the throttle position sensor as well as the MAF sensor which is mass airflow. The throttle position sensor is located on the throttle body. I do have an excellent video showing how to test it. You could check it out over here, circle with the eye. You'll see a link to that video and I also open one up to show what it looks like. The mass airflow sensor is installed on the air intake hose between the air filter and the throttle body. And this is what it looks like when you break open the end. Inside you'll see the ceramic piece, actually two pieces, got that one, and this little tiny ceramic piece on the inside. All right, round end. So now you know what it looks like on the inside. The connectors for oxygen sensors, I've seen one wire, two wire, three wire, and four wire sensors. If you're looking for a great deal on oxygen sensors and you don't want to go spend $60, $70 or more at the auto parts store, I did place a link in the video description area to save you a lot of money. It'll only cost you a fraction of the cost buying it locally.